So now I'm going to give you like a magic solution how you can do this and not spend even a minute extra of your time. We have to ensure that the person feels you are with them, not against them. We need to tell people how we feel about them. If the giver of the feedback is not trusted, the feedback is also not trusted. Right, so on the thing, feedback, right? This is a very, very important part of uh, leaders. So feedback itself is an essential part of human nature, right? We want to know how we are doing. That's why I also asked you yourself. <laughs> Tell me how am I doing? Are you happy that you came? Feedback. Essential part of human nature. And giving good feedback has an impact on employees' tasks and job performance, commitment, relationships, morale, motivation, trust. But there is a nice twist on feedback that we'll be discussing, uh, which, uh, which is, I think, quite new, really. So it says the best employees need even more feedback. We sometimes think the best guys don't need to be told how good they are. But just think about it. If you take your worst guy and you give him some good feedback and say you're really good, that guy improves by 10%. Let's say he was doing 10 million a month and now he improves by 10%, it's 10 point, it's 11 million. Your best guy is doing 40 million a month. But we don't bother to give him any feedback because he's doing great anyway, right? You give him that feedback and he improves by 10%, you're doing 44 million, 3 million extra. Right? But this is a common mistake we make as leaders. We spend a lot of time with our low performers, but we spend very little time or sometimes no time at all with our high performers. But we get a much bigger return if we spend that same amount of time on high performers. Because they can do much more. Right? Best performers need even more feedback. So they did this survey at Google, considered one of the best companies to work at. And what this employee said is, rather than superior technical knowledge, what we want is periodic one-on-one -on -one coaching, which includes expressing interest in me and giving me frequent personalized feedback. Frequent personalized feedback. So Google employees, some of the smartest people are saying, this is what we want. We want our bosses to talk to us. We want our bosses to spend time with us. We want them to coach us. We want them to give us personalized feedback. Now, what does personalized feedback mean? If you are my team and I get you all together and say, all of you are doing great, <laughs> that's not personalized. I need to say, Fatima, you are doing great. So Fatima is now smiling. Yes. But actually, that is not personalized enough. I need to say, Fatima, you are doing great because you did this, this, and this, which is really great. Now it's personalized. Lack of feedback is actually worse than even getting negative feedback. So if you really want to demotivate someone to the extent of getting rid of the guy, just ignore the guy. <laughs> that can even make someone sick. So one of my first jobs and the boss I had there, a very nice guy, but he would not speak to anyone. He comes in the morning, goes straight to his room, and that's all you see of him. No good morning, nothing. Goes to the room, close the room, that's it. You see him again at lunch, he woke up. You see him again after lunch, comes and again in the evening. For the one year I worked there, industrial placement, he would have spoken to me twice. And that also, hello, come on. So, we felt very uncomfortable. We didn't know what does he feel about us. Is he happy? Is he not? At least scold, at least please boss, at least scold me. <laughs> at least that shows that you know I'm alive, right? <laughs> right? So we want feedback, right? Okay, what should the outcome of getting, giving any feedback be? If we give any feedback, the result should be a motivated team member, motivated to do better. Let's say if I'm giving, let's say Rohan some feedback and Rohan is the worst person I have in my team. After giving Rohan that feedback, Rohan should be motivated to become better. Otherwise I wasted my time, it would have been better if I kept my mouth shut and didn't say anything. What's the point of giving feedback if after that Rohan is even more demotivated? So if I give feedback, the person getting the feedback should want to do Better. And let's say Venura is my best guy, the star. If I give Venura some feedback and Venura thinks, ah, Sanjeev is happy now, I can reduce my work. <laughs> I have lost the plot, right? I should, it would have been better for me to keep my mouth shut. But by giving Venura the feedback, if Venura is thinking, wow, I can do more, I can do more, I must do more, right? But lots of times we give feedback and that's not the, that's not the result we get, right? 
Even someone feed back and realized it would have been better if I just kept my mouth shut because it has gone the opposite way. How many of you have been there? Yes, we have all been there. So using this word feedback itself, I'm going to do your appraisal. <gasps> appraisal? I'm going to even worse, I'm going to do your performance evaluation. <gasps> exam. So these are again words. What I speak is what I create. So do we even need to say I'm going to give you feedback? <laughs> Can't we say, can we have a chat? So motivated team member. So the learning. Fee giving feedback or whatever word we want to call it is important. Let's be clear about that. We need to tell people how we feel about them. But not really in the way we think we should be giving feedback. So that's the twist. So giving feedback is a human thing. We need it. We need to know, right? So feedback, giving feedback also can have a positive, neutral or negative impact. So if I say something to someone and the outcome of that is negative or neutral, it would have been better if I shut up and not said anything at all. So why is giving feedback so difficult? Why when we give feedback, do people react so badly? This picture I think tells the whole story. People don't want to accept, people are defensive. Why? Because it's about you. Why does someone become defensive? If somebody is doing that, how would you react? Ah, <laughs> you would defend. When do you defend? When you feel somebody is trying to attack. If you feel somebody is trying to attack you, you will always try to defend. I, I felt this was really interesting. Our brain is organized for risk or reward. Our brain is always looking, is this risk? Is this reward? Is this risk? Is this reward? If it's risk, I want to run away. If it's reward, I want to come. So our brain is always scanning like a radar five times a second trying to spot danger. Why is it doing this? Think back to jungle. What's the one word? Survival. It's better to be safe than sorry. Our brains are biased towards identifying danger because we don't want to get caught in danger. And by the way, on a, on a connected topic, our brains are also wired to look for problems. That is why it's so easy for all of us as leaders to spot issues, to spot mistakes, to spot problems. And as soon as you play a problem, we pounce on the guy, right? I saw you doing something wrong. We do that. Why? That's the way we are wired. Because we are thinking, if I don't see a problem, it could become a danger to me. And our brain is always scanning for danger, 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 danger. So when we give feedback also, <laughs> if I sense that the person giving the feedback is against me and not with me, my signal is danger, danger, danger. <laughs> so all my defense mechanisms up now, shields up. So you can't harm me. We are biased towards identifying danger because it's better safe than sorry. If we, if we are not sure, <laughs> of a situation, we don't label it as safe, but we label it as dangerous. Not sure now, let's play, play safe, then let's say dangerous. Because if it's dangerous, I'm going to take care of it. Like if I'm not sure and I say it's safe, I go and jump and I die, problem, right? So when we are thinking danger, it's difficult to access the conscious mind because we are actually retreating, we are going back. That is why when you sometimes give feedback to someone, negative feedback, and you're trying to you know, tell them that I'm something wrong, you find that they are not accepting what you're saying. <laughs> they are becoming emotional. They have put the shutters up. They are being defensive. Why? They sense danger. And when it's, there's danger, you can't access the constant mind because the amygdala has taken control. So another research I found by these two guys, Marcus Buckingham and Ashley Goodall, says that criticism inhibits the brain's ability to learn. And I thought that's interesting, really interesting. So when you criticize someone, although you're trying to teach them a lesson through this, the guy is not going to learn the lesson because their danger signals up. <laughs> they feel you're attacking them. And therefore, they cannot learn. Although what we are trying to do is teach. <laughs> I think this turns on its head everything we knew about feedback, right? Although we sometimes say it's constructive, take it on a positive note. But if that person still feels you're attacking, it's not what we say. It's how that person is accepting it. It's not about us. It's about how is the other person reading us. I am standing like this. 
But I'm not standing like this because I'm defensive. I'm standing like this because I'm cold. Or I'm standing like this because it's comfortable to me. So for you, you don't care. <laughs> what you say is, I don't care, Sanjeev. Right? If you're standing like this, the signal to us is, you seem closed. You seem defensive. You seem nervous. You seem scared about something. Actually, this conversation is in both of our heads, right? <laughs> so it's not about my comfort. It's about how you are perceiving me. It's not about me. It's about you. <laughs> I always have to think about you, not about me. <laughs> As leaders also, if we do that, we think about the team first. We will succeed much more. So we're coming back to the same lesson. Help my team to succeed. Help my team to succeed. Help my team to succeed. Not help me to succeed through the team. That's the difference. If my leadership philosophy is, I need to help myself succeed using my team, the team is not going to respond, right? You are using me. Nobody likes to be used. No. <laughs> but if I'm helping you, and through your success I'm succeeding, oh, that's great. <laughs> so criticism inhibits brain's ability to learn. So what happens, as soon as I'm giving feedback, the person feels that I am attacking. So if somebody is attacking you, you do one of three things. You'll either defend, the, the, the shot can't come through because I'm defending, right? Same way, if I'm trying to give feedback, that feedback I'm giving can't go through Nisan, Nisansala's mind because she's defending against it. That's one thing. Or I might deflect it. Say, Nisansala, you have done this. No, not only me. By look at Sampathi also did. Shepeke, you try to point it at someone else. Deflect. No, 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 Sanjeev. That was me last week. Did you see Sampath did it today? Deflect. Or sometimes we make this mistake when we make generalizations. As leaders, we make a lot of generalizations, no? So I say, Akila, you are always late for work. No, boss. You didn't see, no? Today I came on time. <laughs> now what happens? I'm bold, right? Because I made a statement which he has now dismissed as being incorrect. By the way, that's another learning as leaders. Do not make generalizations. If you are giving some feedback, back it up with facts and figures. I see that last week you were late three times out of five. Here is the report. Specific. Clear. No room for argument. No room for ambiguity. So, this is, for me, this is a very, very bad word in management jargon, right? It's like, karameme, fit, ASAP. Can we get, can we just decide and get rid of that word from my vocabulary, ASAP, ASAP, or as soon as possible. What does it mean? <laughs> Nothing, right? It can mean one thing to you, it can mean one thing to me. You just ask Sanjay, when can you do this? I'll do it ASAP, boss. Now, boss is expecting ASAP to be tomorrow. I am thinking ASAP is next month. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> There's so much ambiguity in, in, in that. So, so my, my team knows this, that they called it, they still do it. They say, uh, Sanjeev, we have some customers. What is some? <laughs> we have only a few. What is few? <laughs> Numbers and comparisons gives you a story, gives you a picture. So deflect, defense, if, or dismiss. So if these guys are trying to attack this castle, the only way they can get in is some, if somebody opens the door. <laughs> Who would the owner of the castle open the door to? Someone that they trust. We are going to accept feedback from someone that we Trust. Trust that you are not trying to harm them, but that you are trying to help them. How many of you have dogs? So when they get injured, I'm sure you go and try to put medicine or whatever, right? Do they bite you then? No. When a dog is injured and you as the master or mistress are trying to, you know, put medicine on the dog, the dog won't bite you. Although it hurts the dog. Why doesn't it bite? Because it trusts you. It hurts the dog. When they put the medicine, it burns, right? <laughs> right? The dog just waits. Because the dog knows you are not trying to hurt it, but you are trying to help it. If the giver of the feedback is not trusted, the feedback is also not trusted. So, for example, if you don't trust me at some level, you will not accept what I am trying to tell you. Because why should you? <laughs> Yeah, that's why if some politician comes on radio and says, don't worry, by next month all our problems are over, you are not going to believe that person. Why? Because hopefully you will not trust that person. What are we trying to say should be trusted? Two things. Competency and knowledge of the giver of feedback should be trusted. And also, he should be emotionally trusted that he is not trying to hurt but trying to help.
If I give you some feedback on how you should better come up with a better insurance instrument or something, should you accept my feedback? No, you shouldn't. Why? Because you cannot trust my competency and knowledge in these two fields. So you should not trust me. Because the competency and knowledge of the giver of the feedback cannot be trusted. Hopefully you will trust me at an emotional level. Now Sanjeev is not trying to hurt me, he's trying to help me. But Sanjeev doesn't have the knowledge to help me. So I can't take his feedback. Two things. So I think for most of us, when we give feedback, we have the competency and knowledge. But sometimes the people are not emotionally trusting us. Trust takes time to build. But you make one mistake and trust is out of the window. So we have to be very careful as leaders. How do we maintain our good name? How do we maintain our brand? And your brand is your name. So Upendra's brand is Upendra's name. Whenever somebody thinks of Upendra, everything associated with Upendra is in the name. And also does the giver of the feedback also accept feedback? So you as leaders, do you accept feedback from your team? I mean, somebody comes and says, who are you to tell me? We do that sometimes. We may not use those words, but that comes across, right? How does the brain read any situation? I think this is very interesting, right? So it's coming up from this acronym, Terra, T-E-R-A. And this word Terra is coming from this word terror, which means the influence a location has on the taste of wine from grapes in that location. I thought that's interesting. So that's why you have Champagne, comes from the place called Champagne. <laughs> There's a place called Champagne in France, I guess, right? How we can influence the climate or the environment in which we are giving feedback. Because if we can control the environment in which we are giving feedback, the grape that comes from that environment, which is the result of that feedback, is going to be nicer, tastier, more productive. So what does Terra stand for? So T is tribe. Tribe is, are you in my tribe? <laughs> are you with me or against me? So we generally think, right, our tribe is with us. Who's the tribe? Our family is with us. <laughs> so are you in my tribe? Are you in my group? Are you in my circle? Are you with me or against me? So when I analyze the situation and I feel my boss is with me, does my danger signals go up or down? Danger goes down because he's in my tribe, my friend. So when we are giving feedback, we have to ensure that the person feels you are with them, not against them. Is that making sense? E is expectation. Do I know what's going to happen next? <laughs> Do I know the future? If I know the future, am I scared? No. When there's uncertainty, I'm scared. So you have to now also give them certainty. Don't worry, I'm with you. Don't worry, we can fix this problem. Don't worry, you have a career here. People want to be reassured. Expectation, do I know what's going to happen? Boss calls me, come, I want to give you some feedback. What's going to happen? What is boss going to tell me? I'm scared. Defense. <laughs> Rank is a little bit more difficult <laughs> to handle. Are you more important or less important than me? Because as the leader, we are more important than them. And they know it. They know you are at a higher status. So therefore, hierarchical authority is already there, right? So they know, no matter how much boss says, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, I'm friendly with you, you he is still my boss. <laughs> but actually what happens in coaching, true coaching is, the coach is at the same level as the person being coached. Coach is not at a higher level. Mentor is at a higher level. And that's why they say that coaching is sometimes more powerful than mentoring. Because you can get onto the level of the person and eliminate this R. There is no difference in rank. But even if the rank is there, not, so, not such a problem. If that is positive and that is positive. So that's now two against one, right? So coaching is an equal level conversation. That's why they say in true coaching, you can coach anyone. <laughs> because you do not know, need to know that other person's industry or business. So if you come in from financial, if Sisuru comes to me and says, Sanjay, can you coach me? Can you do business coaching for me? Yes. <laughs> Because I don't need to know the industry. I just need to know how to be a good coach. If you're a good leader, you can go into in any industry and be a good leader. I'll give you one example. You may know the gentleman, Udayana Vikramasurya. Now he is not at Bandis, he's at Hela now. Yeah, so Udayana worked with me at Unilever's. Udayana's background is finance. From finance, Udayana has moved as head of IT, not knowing anything about IT. From IT, he's moved as head of HR not knowing anything about HR and Unilever having a very strong union. 
Then Udayana leaves uh, uh, Unilever and joins the MS as CEO in uh, one of the garment factories, not knowing anything about garments. So I didn't land from anywhere. I have had good bosses. <laughs> Sriyan Pereira. He came to Unilever from Ricketts. Uh, he's a double accountant. And he became head of IT. I was he's a, one of his assistant managers in the IT department at Unilever. He was head of IT, not knowing anything about IT. We all knew, knew IT, more IT than him. Everyone else had IT, IT degrees. <laughs> he doesn't have anything. But he's one of the best bosses I ever had. So leadership, you're a good leader, you can lead anything. I think that's, that's great, right? Yeah. OK, so tribe, expectation, rank. Last one, A, do I get a say or not? Do I have autonomy? And I, I have found this to be extremely effective. When I say, OK, right, what do you think? What do you want to do? You decide. The responsibility is now on that person, right? Lots of people come to us hoping that we will rescue them from taking responsibility. How? By us taking the decision and telling them what to do. Don't fall into that trap. So I was telling you, I'm, uh, I'm like, uh, we, uh, we started this choir called Sangeet, right? So one young guy came to me recently and said, uh, so they call me Uncle Sanjeev. Uncle, you know, I said I'm going to come for practice next Sunday, but there's this other choir I'm involved in. They are going to for a performance to Candy, and they want me to come with them. What do you think? Can I go? Can you excuse me from practice? For once, for once, I was a little clever. And I put the ball back into his court and said, you decide. <laughs> you decide. It's OK. I trust you. You decide. <laughs> and then he responds saying, uncle, let me think about it and get back to you. The next day, he gets back to me and says, uncle, I decided to honor the commitment I made you. <laughs> Because I told you I would be coming for practice this Sunday. And I decided to tell the other choir I will not be coming with them to Candy because I had already given you a prior commitment. Now, this is Gen Z. So what did I do there? I gave him the choice. I didn't say, no, come for practice. I said, you decide. Autonomy. Do I get a say or not? Most people would like to have a say in what they do. Yes? Don't you like to have a say? Don't you like to have autonomy? So when we are having a discussion, let's try to have those four things. Even rank, you can try to reduce rank. Do you know how you can reduce rank? If you're having a serious coaching conversation or a serious feedback, but the serious feedback conversation, how can you reduce rank? You do not have it in your room. You do not have it at your desk. Your room and your desk brings your whole rank there. Weight of rank. It's, it's all about you, right? What is the result that you want from this? If the result is to show that person who's boss, then you bring in all the trappings of rank. Have you noticed that in lots of organizations, it's probably different now, as you go higher and higher up, two things increase in size. The table size increases, have you noticed? Right? The clerk's table is this size. The CEO's table is... Have you noticed the size of the chair also increases? Sales symbols, absolutely. So if you want to reduce the impact of rank, Get rid of things of bringing in hierarchy. So what you can do is, instead of, let's say, if Yusuf is my boss, instead of Yusuf keeping me here, which brings the table between us, Yusuf says, Sanjeev, come and sit here. Let's have a chat. We have removed, what have we removed? Barrier. The barrier between us. We are sitting on two equal sized chairs. He's still my boss. But I have reduced, as he has reduced as much as he can, the barriers between us. It's not bring down the rank forever. It's bring down the rank in this particular situation so that I can bring down the other person's defense mechanism so that I can give better feedback so that the guy will accept it so that he will change. Let's say, for example, there is a, there is a crisis now, right? Let's say, for example, uh, I have told uh, someone we should have a break now or whatever. And I say, you need to tell me. And if they don't tell me, the feedback will be not no autonomy there. I told you to tell me, why didn't you tell me? Yeah, because there can be a bigger problem if, because they didn't, right? So there are some situations where you have to give very direct feedback. Do this now, coercive, there is a, stay, there is a, there is a place and time for coercive. We sometimes have to do that. Let's say if this place is on fire, I have to say, guys, get up, walk out now. No, Sanjeev, let's have a discussion about that. No, no. <laughs> No discussion. Just do what I'm telling you. Get, get, just stand up, 
take your bag out now so there there is no autonomy that's not a coaching session that's like direct feedback that's saying giving you instructions do this now giving feedback is you're trying to change the person's behavior not for the immediate but for the future so that's an investment of time right you got invest in time you're taking time to do this when we are doing that we can take time to say so now this is what has happened this is what we have seen to happen what do you think you should do now that's autonomy i'm not saying you should do this so pure coaching says use the word what what do you think you should do now we say something which is to me an incredibly stupid thing <laughs> now i won't i don't say no you know i asked you what do you think you should do the answer you give me is incredibly stupid right as soon as i say they what happens autonomy goes away rank is there expectation do i know the future or not no now i think this guy is angry with me he might scream at me right are you with me or against me now with me or against me definitely against me right shutters up again so he gives me this stupid answer what do i say you know it makes me very curious what made you say that then instead of saying that what else could you do <laughs> still autonomy is there but now i am leading this guy down this path where i am trying to take him somewhere instead of giving him the answer i am trying to help him discover the answer himself which is more powerful giving the answer okay boss gave the answer helping the person discover the answer much better how many of you are married did you ask your wife or if you are the wife did your husband ask you to marry them the marry him on the first date how many of you have asked can you marry me on the first date the first time you met for coffee or something ban in the bulund would you get married to someone without trust probably shouldn't no so what i'm trying to tell you is relationships develop over time isn't it it's not an immediate thing in order to develop trust you also need to first develop the relationship and this takes time you can't bring us aboard here today we are to a room and say look i'm your boss trust me no if your boss says that how would we react you want to run away right boss is saying trust me without me having done anything or him having done anything how can i trust him and time is something in your jobs you don't have too much of right anyone else has extra time extra time so how do we spend this time developing trust so the research says the ideal span of control is how much 8 to 12 if you have less than 8 that management layer is probably not required <laughs> remember managers not at in value more than 12 becomes a little impractical to manage less than 8 question do you need or can we add on another four people under you or something like that right yeah, can we join you to another team or shall we take 12 i'll just talk about 12 how often can you meet your 12 people for a one hour good one on one to build a relationship can you do it once a month would meeting them once a month be good a good one hour yeah. so now i'm going to give you like a magic solution how you can do this and not spend even a minute extra of your time wouldn't that be marvelous meet over lunch very easy you have to eat that person has to eat so if it's 12 people i tell them in advance yusuf monday let's have lunch together jamal let's have lunch together follow in monday normally when do we have a one on one chat like this once or twice a year at the so called performance appraisal now here you're not having a at lunch you don't take your reports and go and show here you absent you came at this time on this day na 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 no reports no paper nothing just lunch and it's not all about work you are having a casual conversation so there's no pressure on either side you are trying to develop the what the relationship and by developing the relationship you are trying to develop the what trust so it's not anyone is paying for the lunch unless you want to otherwise it's it's just that we are spending quality time together that's all and kindly switch off your phone for that hour get the other person also switch off the phone for the hour so you have quality time if you can't make it one hour half an hour 45 minutes stay good quality time where that person can talk to you about anything and you can talk to that person about anything by the way if you want people to open up to you what should you do first you should open up to them first you can't bring call someone for lunch now tell me something personal but if i share with iran then say iran you know my son is now doing o levels you know 
right? He's doing all levels, and I'm struggling to find the match to to it. Teacher, for me, me, I can't get the part. I can't. I have hardly any marks. Iranda, any ideas? Then Iranda, his younger guy might say, "Ah, there was this Sampath sir. Now he's working at Virtus, sir. But earlier, Sampath sir was a good <laughs> match to it." <laughs> <laughs> right, one pota set kala dena sampath server. Right, you are building trust. And by the way, vada gana katha. By the way, iranda report tekar mukad dune. What happened to that report? Ah, yes, boss, yes, yes, yes. I'm on, I'm on it. I, bani, bani, iranda. When can I count on you to do it? Because you know, I really need it by Friday. Pulong mai ne the. Right, yeah, okay. See, in my in my corporate life, I had very, very, very few quality one-on-one -on -one chats with my bosses. I don't know how it was, how it is with you, but my chats were very limited. Mostly the performance appraisal, and that also sometimes it sit down. In ten minutes, it's over. We go boss says, Sanjeev, we have to cut it short. I have another meeting to go to. Of course, the rating was good, <laughs> but that's not the point, because I didn't get a chance to talk, to ask, to get his ideas, to share my ideas, and if you remember that Google study. That's what the people want. They want quality time with you. Don't say, "Have lunch with me." I want to talk about all the problems we are having. <laughs> Nobody will want to come. <laughs> Who wants to come? Would you want to come? You go sometimes reluctantly. Boss is saying, "Try to go," but uh, you go with your shutters all up, right? But here you're saying, "Come, let's have a catch up. Let's get to know each other better, right?" I think there's nothing wrong with that.